we know that heading the soccer ball is consequential, at least for people who do it to a very high degree, and likely for some people who are particularly at higher risk, even though they may not do it as much. We looked at hundreds of soccer players who we followed over time, and these are individuals who performed a very wide range of heading. And we have been collecting data to understand how impacts to the head from soccer heading over time may affect brain structure and function. What we found is that players who exceeded in the range of 1,200 or so headers over a 12-month period were more likely to have both changes in their brain and, if their heading was closer to 15 or 1,800 headers over the year, to have worse performance on a memory test. It's important to emphasize that these findings are subclinical. The people aren't knowing that their memory doesn't work. Their doctor hasn't diagnosed them with a head injury. But if we actually go and look, we can see there's an exposure response relationship, meaning the more heading you do, the more likely you are to have these bad things going on. And not only that, but it seems that people in general are okay until they get to those sort of threshold levels, and then they kind of fall off the cliff as they get beyond those levels. In this study, we're reporting really for the first time in this size of a group of individuals, changes that occur in the brain in relation to the amount of heading that was done during that period of time. And the central finding is that over a two-year period, we have shown that in players who head at high levels, we're actually able to measure a decline in brain structure over that time period, which does not occur in individuals who either head less or not at all. Now, in concert with this, we looked at changes in cognitive function and in particular uh, changes that we've previously associated with heading at a point in time. What we found is that there is a trend toward a decrease in function on the memory tests among people who do the most heading. Now importantly, if we look at those who do little to no heading, their performance on the memory test actually increases over time. And that is expected because when you take a normal population and you administer the same test more than once, even if there's a very long time in between, we expect there to be some improvement due to a practice or learning effect. And we see that normal pattern in those who have little to no heading exposure. So in summary, what we're seeing in this study is that over what's really a, a pretty short window of time in young, otherwise healthy athletic individuals is adverse changes in both brain structure and brain function uh, related to high levels of soccer heading.